Oh my goodness. Oh, John Jones. John Jones, Tom Aspinall. Yes, please. Right, guys? But where are you at on this? See, there's, there's more than meets the eye here. I know you want to see Aspinall. I know that you want to see Jones. I know that that's your answer. But if I can remember, or if I can remind you to try to remember one week ago, you didn't. One week ago. If you had the power of the pin, you got John Jones in one quarter, you could bring him any opponent that you want. You weren't bringing him Stipe Miocic. Not a week ago. That was a year ago. A week ago, you were bringing him Alex Pera. And during the course of last week, you got a step closer to that, which was John Jones and Stipe booked on the same night as Alex Pera. That was not a mistake. If anything had happened to Stipe, as sure as night follows day, Alex Piero was going to be moved into that spot. But I think if you had that same power of the pin now, you don't make that match. I think that you make Tom. As a matter of fact, I'll go a step further. I don't believe if something happens to Stipe, they're going to insert Alex Piero, even though they've already booked him and even though it's that date, I think they're going to bring in Tom. And it, it just speaks to, right, there's a larger point here, which it speaks to how quickly things change. And you know what? That's not fair to John, but there's nothing you can do. We don't do fair in this sport, but it's not fair to John. As superior of an athlete as John has been to the rest of the boys, he's just like the rest of the boys mentally from his intrinsic value that he's seeking to the motivation that he must find. He's just like him. He would like to do something that's difficult. He would like to be recognized in it. He would like to be paid. He'd like to be the last fight of the night. He'd like those things. But he would give both of those things back for a pat on the back. And this is the one thing, this is the wrestler mentality, where you go out and you do something for so long and you're not getting anything for it. As a matter of fact, you're paying to be able to do it. Well, you do get something. And it's not the medal. Even if you try to convince yourself of it, it's not the recognition or the all-American status. It's the pat on the back. You'll come into practice and you will get tortured for two hours a day, every day, as long as that coach tells you, good job on your way out the door. And I'm sharing that with you because it's exactly what John did. This isn't maybe. This isn't Chael's opinion. It's happened right in front of you. John was not getting those same pat on the back at 205 pounds. It was believed that he had cleared out the division. It was believed that there wasn't very much interesting. He gave a world title back because that pat on the back was so damn important to him. He gave a world title back, took three years, moved into a division, just so for the first time in a long time... Somebody could question how this match was going to go, and therefore, if it goes John Ways, they would tell him, good job. They would recognize him. He moves into heavyweight. He agrees to fight Francis Ngannou, whether, whether you guys have been armed with that or not. He agreed to fight Francis Ngannou. That, that whole John was... That is false. But then it gets said that he would never fight Sergi Pavlich, and Sergi goes down and said that he would never fight Tom Aspinall. John's looking around going, man, I'll fight these guys right now. You didn't even tell me you wanted to see that fight. You're asking me why I'm fighting Stipe instead of Sergi or Tom. You never brought up Sergi or Tom at the time I was presented with who is said to be the greatest heavyweight the UFC's ever had is Stipe Miocic. That's who I signed to fight. You're telling me, this is John talking, right? You're telling me you want to see me take the absolute hardest fights. Well, when I signed the contract, this is the guy that you told me was the absolute hardest fight. And now people are taking that from him. They're taking it from him. And that's a hard spot to be in. I could only imagine. I got that same wrestler mentality. Whether it was Roy Pittman or it was Clayton Hires, it was almost abusive the way practices were. They were so difficult. You're on your knees. You're, you're vomited into buckets. You're so tired. You get nothing for it. But you'll come back tomorrow because those people you respect told you, good job. It's a really interesting thing that you did think about it from that perspective because, see, Tom called John out over the weekend. And it was a very sheepish call out. And by sheepish, I just mean it was polite. Like, there are cage fighters. And then there are mixed martial artists. And Tom is a martial artist. And that is very evident just of the fact that his father is in his corner passing that tutelage down. That's very Gracie-esque. But that is a martial artist. So a martial artist will do a call-out in a very polite way, which is what Tom did. And for any other heavyweight to break in there right now is tough. I don't want Tom to paint himself in a corner. Opportunity happens. He became the world champion in November of last year at Madison Square Garden because opportunity presented himself, not because 
of the rankings and or the bout agreements. So if Palm is going to hedge on something that's already happened, right? It was lightning in a bottle, but he already caught it once. Why can't he go back to Madison Square Garden in November one year later and catch something? If that is the game that he's playing to try to find himself opposite John, I think he's playing it right. I do. But if we're going to go by what the information that we have, we're only as good as the information that we're given. The information that we're given by Dana was, yes, Tom versus the winner of John and Stipe. Guys, we're talking about very realistically, for, for sure that's 2025, but very realistically, they're probably going to save that. That's probably not a February fight. It's probably not a March fight. That's probably going to get saved for International Fight Weekend of 2025. So if you're in Palm's shoes, that's a meaningful amount of time. I really do think, and I think Tom would agree with me, if we had him here right now and said, hey, we can make this happen, but in a best case, I don't know if we, I don't know if it will happen. We got to get a guy that said he's going to retire. We got to get him to agree. Oh, by the way, we got to get him past Stipe Miocic, which is not easy for anybody. We got to get him healed. We got to play the venue game like anybody else. And then if it all works out, July of next year, do you want that? Or would you like to see what's behind door B? I think Tom would say, I want to see what's behind door B. I want to, I want to stay busy. I want to do something else. But it, it, it is just such an interesting thing. Like, I don't really know how any other heavyweight's going to be able to break in there. Stipe's got the bout agreement. Poton wants the match and is a lot closer than you guys think. He was booked at Madison Square Garden, so if it just didn't have, he would have the match. Right? They were a lot closer to making that fight than possibly you're aware. But now all of a sudden you have Tom. And Tom's suggestion is I'll come out to Madison Square Garden, pull on Goliath, put me in, I'll fight. Poton. Well, he's the world champion. You can't fight him. But, uh, I'm, I'm the champion too. It doesn't really matter to some people if you put light heavyweight or you put interim in front of it or you put heavyweight or you put undisputed. If it ends in world champion, I'm one of those guys, man. That's good enough for me. And you know what? It'd be good enough for Piera too. Piera would take that deal right now. Piera would take that deal, move up, see how we could do with Tom and the winner draws into the winner of Jones and Stipe. It's a very exciting time. So now if you're another heavyweight, and you're looking at the landscape, and you're realizing Tom has something else to do. Tom is going to have to do something else. You not only have to get in front of one guy, you got to get in front of two, right? To get to John Jones right now, there's already a logjam. It's a logjam of world champions. Interim champions and light heavyweight champions. And it's just an interesting spot. Heavyweights is the perennial division, right? That's the belt Hulk Hogan had. That's the belt Muhammad Ali had. That's the belt Mike Tyson had. Mike Tyson and Muhammad Ali could have made the lower weight class. They didn't want it because it's not the same prestige. Heavyweights. And we haven't had that here in the UFC in a long time. It has not been the featured and perennial division. And all of a sudden, what a difference. What an incredible difference we have. Now, before we unpack any of this, we're going to have to get halfway through the year of 2025, or there's a slip up at the Garden, which we're not going to cheer for. We're not going to cheer and hope something happens. So it, it's an interesting spot. It's a tough spot. And I think once we do calm down, right, once we calm down, get a deep breath, start to look at things, we're not going to have a battle of Tom or Poton versus John. I, I think we're going to have to find somebody else for Tom. That's what I think. Tom's going to have to do something between now and then. And there's only one guy that jumps off the page, which is Surreal Gone. And I don't know how bullish I am on that idea. Because there's not a scenario where Surreal's going to get back in there with John Jones. Not, at, not, not after he laid down the first time. So it gets complicated, doesn't it? But these complications, these arguments and discussions, this is why we're fans. This is literally what makes the sport fun.